Chris and interviews uh, Dr. Baker. He, he has a straightforward relationship between the first perspective. And you all you participate for the group set up to aim to set up the long here. Something that's done for patents in the past and has an actual patent program. So I think she's developed the kind of Dr. Day, Chief Eggleton just gave you a wonderful introduction. You may not have been able to hear fully, uh, but if you're ready, uh, your PowerPoint is up and uh, you have the active attention of our board. Great. Thank you all very much and good evening. I appreciate the time tonight. Um, I want to tell you that you guys are, are pretty special in terms of being picked for doing this opportunity. I'm not sure the Chief mentioned this, but there were over 200 departments around the country that expressed interest. And out of those, we could only select 10. And yours is one of those. And so there, you have the opportunity to be part of the first health and wellness study that's been done for volunteer firefighters. So we're pretty excited. And uh, let me see if I can tell you a little bit about it and then answer your questions. Next slide, please. There's a lot of partners that are involved in this with me. I'm at the University of Texas School of Public Health. Um, as well, the other key investigators are at the Center for Fire, Rescue, and EMS Research at, at NDRI, which is in Kansas. Um, the owner of the FIRST 20 program is a supporter and a part of a group. Um, the, and Heather Schaefer at the National Volunteer Fire Council is um, strongly supporting us as well. And of course, I thank FEMA for the Assistance to Firefighters Grants Program because they have put $1.5 million towards this activity. Next slide. The purpose of this study, I believe the chief mentioned, is to look at health and wellness intervention to improve nutrition, fitness, and body composition of the firefighters. Next slide. The rationale behind that, you guys know better than anybody that you provide the, with the volunteers the majority of the fire service in our country. Um, you know that volunteer firefighters have more stress and there's very limited resources typically to provide health and wellness for volunteer firefighters. Next. Um, the importance to firefighter health behind this program are that overweight and obesity is a problem in all the fire service, both career and volunteer. You guys know that CVD is the leading cause of firefighters' line of duty deaths, and many of the characteristics of overweight and obese firefighters lead to cardiovascular disease issues. Next slide. Firefighters who are overweight have also um, greater chances of musculoskeletal injuries, and they report more poor health days. Um, we know that the dietary habits from our own research um, indicate that their um, behaviors are not real good in that area, and as well, we know that fitness could be improved in the majority of the health of the firefighters. Next. So what is the FIRST 20? It is a program that was put together by Dave Wurzel, who is a volunteer firefighter in Pennsylvania. He put this together um, with experts in nutrition, fitness, and mental health. The key components are to improve nutrition, fitness, and mental health. Really there, it's stress, which is something that's faced every day. Um, next slide. We have actually customized the contents of that program so that it fits for this particular intervention, which includes six months of active involvement of the firefighters in those areas of fitness and nutrition. The name of the program is explained here because we get asked about that a lot. Next slide. So to give you an idea of what they'd be doing, this is a few screenshots that I've put together from the program um, at various stages of its development. Um, as you look at this, you see this is sort of an overall screen. There will be tools in the program, meaning education, information, flyers, links, handouts, things like that that they can go to for resources. There will be guidance in the program. 
uh, guidance in specific topical areas in nutrition and fitness with how-tos and also um, reference for how to do stuff. Um, it will have the different uh, programs for tracking so they can keep track of their fitness and of their nutrition. It will have uh, coaching. There will be health coaching. Um, a firefighter will actually be contacting each of them for uh, setting up goals and also providing support and encouragement throughout the program. Um, they will be setting goals. They will be involved in fitness challenges. So there's individual and group activities that can be done within a station, within a department, and even across departments. We'll be connecting folks. And then there is um, some health rewards just within the program for um, uh, small rewards of things they can get. Again, uh, the idea of challenge and keeping points. So go to the next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, one area that shows that they'll be able to do quick videos. These are like YouTube videos for different exercises. Go to the next slide. This is one here showing just uh, doing a, a push-up in the correct way. Um, firefighters do all these demonstrations for us. Some are seconds long, some are maybe a minute or two minutes, so they know how to do a technique. Next slide. Um, they'll also be using equipment that's available in the stations. Different stations around the country have everything from nothing to really, really elaborate um, uh, fitness equipment. So there are activities that can involve minimal as well as maximum resources. Um, next. They take uh, places to record their fitness. Next slide. And then in the area of nutrition, there's 24 different weeks of nutrition information, web links, tasks, and handouts, and there'll be challenges in the nutrition area also. Next slide. Here's where they can enter foods. Next slide. Here's where you could see what a meal would look like. Next slide. Resources. These will be things they could print out, put up in the department, things they could take home to family, and because we know that people eat together. <laughs> Next slide. Um, the health coaching, again, there would be two to three times during the six months of active intervention. Um, for answering questions. Next slide. And then the health rewards. Um, they get tokens uh, for doing uh, doing their tracking, reporting, uh, moving through the program, going to the different sections, trying the different levels of exercise because they're graduated from sort of beginner on up to more advanced and more challenging depending on the fitness level of the firefighter. Next slide. So what happens? Um, we would schedule a date to come and actually recruit your firefighters at your station. We would travel there. We bring all the equipment and set up. We describe the study, consent them on site. Then we do a, a, a pretty comprehensive assessment, blood pressures, heights, weights, all the things listed. We would describe and enroll the firefighters then in the intervention. Um, for six months, they'd be active. Then we would return at the close of that session and um, do another assessment. So it's a staggered entry. We obviously can't be at every fire station at the same time. We've got to schedule them. So half of the people will get, uh, the stations get three exams, the others get two before and after. Next slide. So the estimated timeline, um, August and December, we'll be doing the first five departments. Beginning in January 2016, we'll do the second five, we'll start them. We'll do the second exams of the first five, the second exams of the second ones, and the third exams. Those will all happen in 2016. Um, in January of May of 2017, we complete. Once we have your letter of commitment, if you um, uh, all decide and, and make that decision, you will get scheduled. Um, we are already been actively recruiting with a lot of the other departments. We've got one we're going to in three weeks. So we're already starting to gear up to go to these. So um, when we get your letter of commitment, we will be able to give you more specifics. So I think I'll stop here and see if you guys have any other questions that I could respond to to help you with your decisions.
Okay, great. We um, I know that um, uh, for those of you who don't know Leanne Knox, Leanne is our health and wellness uh, director. I'm sorry, I'm just making up a title for you, Lisa. <laughs> and uh, but she also wears two hats. She's a volunteer at Western. And one of the questions that Leanne had, which I didn't even think about, which is great, as I assume, are we have uh, three volunteer rescue squad stations here too. Um, I think a couple years ago that FEMA uh, opened this up to um, firefighter and rescue squads. We run an integrated system, so oftentimes everybody's on the same team. Would, would those departments have access to this as well? Um, that is a great question, and yes, um, we would consider those stations. Um, uh, Chief Bell sent me a quick list right before this meeting, and it, it showed me that there were some departments that are specific for rescues. And yes, we would be able to pick um, uh, someone from there too. Since your department is so large, what we will do within your department is if once um, one of the, the stations agrees and to participate, then they have the opportunity, everyone in their group, to participate um, that are in the combination groups. I would say that the department has, I believe, the counties, which are predominantly career. We can take, by the definition of this study, we can take combinations where it's sort of a mix of some career, some volunteer, but if it's predominantly career with only a little bit of volunteer, those groups would not be um, in the random selection process. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. We, you know, our, our ratio is, is quite large here. Roughly 700 volunteers and 100 career staff, so we're we're, we're heavily uh, staffed with volunteers. So I don't I don't think that'd be a, an issue. Um, well, I, I just need those when I get those exact numbers, we'll be able to tell you. We want to be as inclusive as possible. We just have to, you know, this was ideally for the kind of volunteer environment. So that's why none of the career onlys are eligible. Well, um, one other thing too, I wanted to clarify um, here is that you know, if, if, if there's consensus to move forward with this, this would be a relationship between you and your staff and the the, uh, the volunteer chief at that department. This is not a sort of a county-driven thing. This is just an opportunity for us to really participate in something that, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we've only had passive activity at this point. This is something that's very proactive. Um, and it sounds very interesting, and I hope people see this as a is a true benefit to our members. We talk a lot about what we can do to our, for our volunteers to, to provide them with some retention issues. I think providing this, especially the coaching, is a real uh, advantage to being a volunteer here. So, but this is not a county, we're not, the county's not involved in this in terms of any oversight, all information shared with the member and Dr. Dave's staff is between her staff and the member, it's not in any way captured or recorded by the county or uh, anybody else, really, in fact. Um, right. I hope that's correct. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, this is considered research. So every firefighter on that first day will sign a consent form that will assure him or her that no one will see that data. It will not be given back to the chief. It will not be given to the county. It is for research purposes only. Um, and so that's part of the assurance that we do with all of our um, studies to, again, allow them to know that they can fully be open and, you know, get the most out of it because it's to benefit their health. Okay. So do you guys have any questions on this? Um, what do you, what's your thoughts? Any, any issues that you see? Uh, any reasons not to go forward with this? Dr. Day, the question was from Chief Gentry from our Prose Firehouse Station 5. He was wondering uh, approximate number of folks you want from each station for participation. When we come into a station, we open it to anyone who can come and is available on our scheduled visitation day. 
So that's where when we verify your numbers per station of all the chiefs who are interested in having their consider, then we'll know specifically how many of those stations, how many stations we can take from your whole entire department. Um, and then anybody who can come that time that we're in town, because obviously we have to travel across the country to go to all of these. So if it's this week and you know they're on vacation that week, then they're just not going to be eligible because they have to be available for that baseline assessment and recruitment process. Other than that, we're not going to exclude people. Understood. Thanks for your response, Dr. Day. Any, uh, any other, other questions? Yeah, I think it's something that we've made it. Well, it looks like there's general consensus here. I'm sure there will probably be tons of questions as soon as we get off the phone. But you know, if there are, I can follow up with you, Dr. Day, and uh, and we can get those resolved and, and working with Leanne, too. Um, but otherwise, I think uh, we're ready to commit, and we'll talk about uh, some of the details later on. All right. Thank you all very much, and, and we really do look forward to, to working with all of your departments. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Day. I'll go ahead and log you out of the webinar. Great. Thanks.